What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Whiskey Web and Whatnot with your hosts, Robbie the Wagner and Charles William Carpenter the <laughs> Third. I love the name. Yeah, that <laughs> makes me sound more important than I am in real life. <laughs> I'm actually Alexander the Third as well. Oh, love it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're competing thirds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So our guest today is Dante. How's it going? Yeah, I'm good. How are you guys doing? Excellent. Good, good. Yeah, do you want to give a few yeah, sentences about who you are and what you do? Yeah, so I'm Dante and the founder of Onboard Base and Proxy Vault, very recent. And basically, we build security infrastructure for di distributed teams, right? For example, a scenario. Have you ever... Would you buy a brand new Tesla and give the keys to your car to some stranger off the street of San Francisco? Not in San Francisco, Probably but not. if I was no. in like Austin or <laughs> Washington, D.C., I would hand it. Oh, and they're all trustworthy in Washington, D.C., so I would absolutely <laughs> give it away there. Well, it wouldn't be any different from businesses today. I mean, they give the keys to the kingdom, API keys and database credentials to developers all the time. As you mean, absolute trust, but newsflash. Developers are not secure by default, so why are you doing that? Yeah, and so yeah. we recognize this error in the system and build solutions for it. Nice. Very cool. Hmm. Yeah. I definitely already have questions there, but I cannot ask those questions sober. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's let's do some whiskey. But yes, we have yeah. we have all checked secrets in to get before, I feel like. So oh, um, absolutely. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> in tw yeah. In twenty something years. <laughs> yeah. There's definitely not been databases with PII on my laptop before. Definitely not. <laughs> Off of a VPN or anything else. All right. So today, oh folks, goodness. we are having the Woodford Reserve double oaked. It is 90.4 proof. It is not age stated because Woodford likes secrets. But the mash mm. bill is 72% <laughs> corn, 18% rye, and 10% malted barley. I believe it's probably a four to six year age. Brown Foreman distills it, and they also are the distillers of like Old Forester and Jack Daniels. You may have heard of those. This one's special secret sauce is that they do the original aging in brand new charred oak barrels, and then they do a second aging in another brand new charred oak, oak barrel because they like to waste. I don't know, but apparently it gives <laughs> it some additional yeah. flavor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I have no idea how long the second aging is. Also, it's a secret, so, you know. Mm. Is what yeah, it is. like why not just let it? I guess they're thinking most of it like comes off quickly, so like switching it to a new barrel makes it more intense oak or something. I don't know. Potentially, I mean, I that's know. like the ideology behind the whole all, all you know brand new oak barrels to begin with is that it doesn't take as long when they're not used, and then you you don't have to get as deep into the wood. But I don't know. Mm. I like the the coffee cup flex there. They're like, listen, mm. this could be tea, it could yeah. be whiskey. Who knows? <laughs> mm. yeah. I'm smelling this some is... sour gummy worms. Hmm. Yeah. I think it more of like a lemon juice leathery mix in my smell. Mm. I think. Yeah, that, that's uh, what I said. Get more lemon. Lemon, yeah, right? Like lemon <laughs> yeah. juice, like kind of. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. All right, I'm going to prime the taste buds. I mean, it's been, I don't know, about 24 hours since mm. I started this yesterday. <laughs> and... Mm hmm. Yeah, a lot of drinking this week. <laughs> yeah, this, this is actually my March. my whiskey cup. Nice, I, I like it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I try. Hmm. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I'm just making funny faces. No, interesting. Usually, yeah. I go with Glen Fittich, but this oh, is a okay. new one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> more Scotch than bourbon, typically for you. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. I mean, except for everything, because I'm from Kentucky. <laughs> fair, fair yeah, I still get a little lemon juice in the flavor. And uh, oh. Oh, let's. Oh. Oh. Definitely some sweetness there, though, like a um, like a lemon starburst a little bit, but not as tart mm. for me. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I'm going to be very productive after this call. <laughs> no, no, you might as well just cash it in. That's yeah. kind of where we end up with these things as well. 
going to get worse for yeah. me too because I live in Arizona and we don't do daylight savings time. So everything, oh. every, yeah, twice a year my life and schedule are ruined. I'm coming up on that. Uh. And so I'll be drinking even earlier. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure I mean, exactly what's located, but. The, the, there's a saying that says, if you want your weekend to last longer, start drinking on Wednesday. Nice. <laughs> and there you go. And here we are. So, yeah, I hope, I hope you are not beholden to some VCs or anything of that nature to be productive for the next couple of days. <laughs> if so, we're sorry. <laughs> it's all right. Hmm. Yeah. I, I, I stand, I hold, whoa, yeah. Robbie's having a hard time. I hold I, true. I breathed the, it in. You're not supposed to. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, wrong pipe, wrong pipe. Mm. The finish is still kind of leathery for me, or maybe I guess straight up oaky, double oak. I mean, just right to the point. Sometimes yeah. it is what it says, and sometimes it's some weird made up thing. For double oak, it doesn't seem that oaky, honestly. No, not crazy, but it is like crazy, an yeah. oak like finish. Yeah, I don't know. It's actually kind of smooth, it's but smooth. It, yeah. it's, it's down well. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't say there's a lot of depth there, but. Yeah, it's not bad. So, you may or may not be familiar, Dante, with our highly technical tentacle scale. So, it's zero to eight tentacles. Zero, horrible, please never give me this again for, meh, you know, it's not bad. I wouldn't kick it out of bed. And eight, it is amazing, and I will never have any more Glenn Fittich or any other Glenn. <laughs> uh, that it, it, it's, yeah. it's probably a seven. Whoa, probably you're going seven. seven. Yeah, you like it. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I do like it. <laughs> but I'm not taking right. up Glenn, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, you can't go full eight. And, uh, yeah, but it's a, it's a seven. It's good. Yeah, fair enough. Good. What do you think, Robbie? Um, Yeah, I think for, like, what it is, it's pretty good. Like, a bourbon-y bourbon is like, <laughs> you know, it's, it it doesn't have a lot of complexity, I feel like, but, like, in terms of bourbon, it's executed well. So I, I'm going to give it a six, I think. Okay, fair enough. Mm. Well, for me, so I do think it is, I mean, it looks it looks nice coming to a party. I like the price point about it, too. It's, uh, uh, it's good, it's reasonable. Things can get nuts these days. If you get anything under 60 bucks, I feel like you, you're almost getting a steal as long as it's tasty. I do think it lacks a little complexity for me in terms of bourbons. Mm. Obviously, we drink a shit ton of, of this, so I've got a lot to compare to. So to me, it's like, it's not bad as a sipper. I actually think it might make some very decent, like, one or two ingredient cocktails. Like, it'd be nice, like, in a whiskey sour with this, with, like, bring out those lemon notes or whatever else. Mm. So for me, in that sense, I think I give it a five. It's like above average, but it's not it's not swinging for the fences for me. But again, this is all subjective. There's no right answer anyway. Yeah, yeah. But I would recommend it. So yeah, yeah. I I mean, Woodford's always like it's nothing to be ashamed of. There's nothing they're putting out there that is like, oh, this is bad. I mean, absolutely. Like anything I've tried from them has always been like pretty decent. I just have a personal story and a vendetta slightly against them because I was at the distillery doing a tour. Gosh, when would this have been? I mean, at least 10 plus years ago. And we, we were in there and we're doing the tour. And this guy, Earl, was our tour guide. And we get like kind of far down the tour. And he shows us, it's a thing called a whiskey thief. It's like this copper thing that you put in there. You just like put your thumb on it and you get some out and put it in the glass. And that's just like how they try it. And they show us that, and then they pass glasses around. And and until it gets to us, and myself, my brother, and a friend, and it gets to us, and he's like, oh, well, you guys actually, I'm, he grabs the cup before it gets to us, pours it back in the barrel, and then we can just smell the, like, whatever's left. And we were like, Earl, is it, I wasn't going to take a drink, but if I get another chance, I absolutely will. And then I was just like, to hell with Woodford for a while. So anyway, that's my <laughs> anecdote yeah, about console. them. Yeah, console. jerks. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, should we do some hot takes? Let's do it. Let's do some hot takes. 
I will start because the second question is Robbie's favorite. Yeah, and he always yells me. at me if I take <laughs> it. So in TypeScript, do you prefer explicit types or inferred types? That assumes you use TypeScript. Maybe you don't. Me or Robbie? Oh, sorry. Oh, I know what Robbie yeah. thinks. Uh, yeah, nobody uh, cares what he thinks, really. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so you would not explicit. say. Um, I'm very explicit for security reasons. There you uh, go. <laughs> I feel if you leave things too open, there is a whole lot open for translation, especially when working with a team of devs. You you can't imagine, <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> the things that can go on when you don't. So... It's like this, right? Developers are so smart and amazing that even when you have security in place, they can go above and beyond it, right? Yeah, like sure. literally break it. Now imagine when you don't have things explicit. It's chaos, almost chaos at least. Yeah, I could see that potential. <laughs> I've definitely broken the rules many of times for my own preference <laughs> yeah. and convenience. So, <laughs> Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. How about you guys? How about you well, guys? Most things, it depends, but I tend to prefer inferred because I'm lazy. I don't want to have to type as much, so I just <laughs> let it, like, someone else decides for me. <laughs> and there you go. There you have it. It yeah. depends is a great answer, though. Fair yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our next one is Tailwind or Vanilla CSS? Oh, tough one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's so, no security uh, out here, so... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I've done vanilla CSS for a long time, but recently I've become a Tailwind developer. <laughs> <laughs> I would not go back to vanilla CSS. It takes yeah. <laughs> so much time and you, so Tailwind for me, definitely Tailwind. Right. Oh, nice. uh, yeah. It's, I could, previously I could spin up websites in maybe a couple of days, but with Tailwind I can do it in minutes. Literally meant so. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah I, I totally agree with that. Tailwind <laughs> yeah. is. I I don't get to use Tailwind at work right now, and I am so slow. It like I just never want to change the styles of anything. I'm like, I'll make the functionality, but it, it's just gonna look how it looks. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna avoid that. <laughs> Let the chips fall where they may. Yeah, uh, and, yeah. I don't know how I've lived without Tailwind for so long, but <laughs> well, when you were waiting for someone to make it. That's all. Yeah. 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 All right. Git rebase or Git merge? Okay. I use merge a lot, so I might be biased towards it because I use it merge more than rebase. But yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll definitely go with merge. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. That's fair. Yes. Mm. We got to yeah. pick mm. a side. <laughs> they can both be used wrong. Like, you know. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I think the the real answer is, like, what your commits look like at the end of the day. Because if that's clean-ish, it doesn't matter what you're using. It's just, like, you know, it's personal preference. Oh. As many True. I'm a personal preference as well. I try to make sure my commits are clean, but I just never think rebased. Mm. Just never think, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna skip this one. Sidebar on the left or right in VS Code. I use so, VS Code. <laughs> yes, I use I use VS Code. Pretty much everyone. So, sidebar. Right. So, when you say sidebar, is it the folder view or split? Yeah, screen? like the file the tree, view. the search. Oh, yeah, the file, file tree. Def yeah. Definitely on the left. Yeah, definitely on the left. So, and uh, I don't know that maybe that's, I don't know about all that, but that's kind of how I read, I read left to right. So I prefer a lot of what I'm doing to start that way. Mm. But that's yeah. personal preference side. I don't know about. I haven't encountered someone that has moved it yet. Like I've seen people online that say they've moved it to the right side. Yeah, but I'm like huh. I haven't talked to a person that has done it, so I think it's just like a couple of people did it, and then people are like, "Wait, why would you do that?" And like, there's yeah. a big 
big thing on Twitter after that. Or Some people come uh, out of the caves or whatever. I have and one they're like, for you guys. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have one for you guys. VS Code or NeoVim? <laughs> well, <laughs> given our previous yeah. question, I'm going to say VS Code. I am, I'm NeoVim curious. That's what I would say. Yeah. Because I've seen enough content like... on Twitter where I'm like, this seems cool. If I ever have any time, which is never, I would mm-hmm. love to maybe go through it and see what I think. But yeah. yeah, I think it's the same as like, I have a the really fancy split Kinesis 360 keyboard thing. And every time I try mm-hmm. to learn it, I'm like, I need to actually write code today. So I'm going to go back to my other keyboard. I feel like the same thing would be true with NeoVim. It's like, this is very powerful, but do I have a year to like, actually get used to it or yeah. should i just use yeah. VS Code? yeah i'm yeah. just lazy i'm not using the other yeah no. mm-hmm. <laughs> i mean it's probably been like a good decade or so that i've been since i was initially impressed with like how efficient a good vim user can be and i still haven't done it so you know it just goes to show that's probably i don't know not a priority for me i think it's people like who use yeah neo vim are more hobbyist or just trying to try it out at the moment rather than mm. being more productive with it that's kind of yeah. those i've seen at least yeah right? i wouldn't uh, say i wouldn't tell you say that to primogen no yeah, <laughs> primogen would disagree yeah he would disagree <laughs> he's got some videos as to why and how he is so much better with it and in his case i i, I see that that's true i just don't know how like i go from zero to even 50 percent of that in any efficient way yeah yeah. yeah. All right, I've got one more for you. I love that you turned it around back to us, though. But I'm, you know, you're not getting out of this last. Yeah. One. <laughs> what do you think about nested ternaries? Hmm. If you saw a pool request, or maybe you're responsible for said pool request that <laughs> had like three, four levels deep of nested ternaries, what do you think about that? Code? I, I, I reject it. Yeah. So we know <laughs> where you're reject- at with that. Yeah. yeah you're no, like, reject- you're fired. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. I just ask them to rewrite it. It's, I don't think that is efficient code. Right. It, even when I'm writing HTML, this is right. I don't go that deep because I don't feel it's efficient code. It takes too long to hit the dump. And no. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. um I could I can understand why you might do it, but it's a no for me. Like n- yeah. you know, there are better ways to go around it, like literally better ways. Uh but it can be the same argument with for me, my div is everything. My div is a span, my div is sometimes an eight <laughs> tag. Like, <laughs> so, so semantic HTML <laughs> is the question we should have asked. I see. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, so, but yeah, it's just for, just a quick tangent there because you said that's going to be a no for me. And I didn't even really watch this show, but that's a whole like American Idol, Randy Jackson. You'd be like, it's going to be a no for me, dog. Had <laughs> you had you finished it with a dog, I would have been really, really impressed. <laughs> so throw uh, that in there. Uh, well, but yeah, it's, uh, uh, that was a curious question because. I think I've only encountered it once working with someone like follow for next to Like I've only encountered it once. And yeah. when I saw it, my brain began to just, why are you doing this? That's literally my, like the first thing, like, why are you doing this? And I understood why, but I could saw, see that I could write something some way different and just do just change this place. It, I, I don't want to wake up tomorrow and ask why again yeah yeah and that's yeah. the thing is like you come back to it later or even if in the moment you take the time to kind of read it and break down the you know the whole like decision tree there yeah it's, it's, it's a lot of cognitive loads where going through it so right right yeah. and if you are someone that has to like support that over time or understand it more than once it just feels like that's already like if if i have to really get deep to break it down to just review that code then that's already a, a fallacy so <laughs> mm-hmm. i don't yeah. know my yeah. two cents keep it but, simple but no. so well uh, simple is 
simple is complicated. I mm, found that's right. It's an art into <laughs> yeah. itself. Yeah. Yeah. Simple is quite complicated. Yeah. yeah, that's the fun part. Mm. Yeah. So, speaking of simple or complicated, tell us about onboard base and how you manage all of these secrets and things people should not be passing around. Tell tell us more. Mm. So uh, I'm a software engineer and a product designer mm-hmm. and I've worked a lot as a contractor, either as an engineering lead or part of an engineering team. And something that happened so often was I get copied and pasted environment variables of email or Slack. <laughs> yeah. Fun, fun. But that is literally a data breach waiting to happen. It's just waiting to happen. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, I seen a data breach happen as one of the companies I've worked at, and it's not pretty. Everyone is on hands on deck. Sometimes it, most people don't even know what to do. And I tell people that if you manage environment variables, well, congratulations, you are a security engineer. Mm. Because you have to yeah. find a way to secure that. Right. Yeah. And uh, so we build on board base to not intrude on what you do but to sit as a secure layer on top of your infrastructure, your CLI, your SDK, your server infrastructure, just sit there and just push the secrets everywhere possible, even down to your local code base where engineers need them, right? So to avoid any copy and pasting going on real time. So we just basically remove that. But it's hard. We've seen hard adoption because people don't want change. Yeah. People don't like change. So it's, been tough. It's it's hard to sell to developers. It's even harder to sell security to developers. Right. <laughs> and I found that one of the reasons because security is not a KPI for a lot of teams until mm. you get to that scale. You're right. And so yeah. we, as much as possible, have made on be so seamless that it's become a no brainer to use. Right. You store it in the store. You pull it anywhere that you need it real time and we don't show those secrets anywhere, right? Developers work without seeing it. They just have it when they need it, right? Mm. And uh, we began to see energy tech companies really adopt it, which was a bit weird when we first noticed it, but we've seen more energy tech adopt it. And that's largely because they have a lot of infrastructure and they're working with more extended distributed teams. So it was really, really fun to know. and. Yeah, so for me, it's an interesting project and something I, I I wake up to every day wanting to improve. It feels like it's a piece of me. Like, dude, I built this for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so it's fun and can be frustrating at times because one, we are a single point of failure, meaning we can't afford to go down. Literally, mm. the color for it to go mm-hmm. down. So, high availability is number one for us. And for that, we have to really maintain a lot of server costs. So, we have multi cloud servers. So, always switching once any one of them goes down, but we almost never go down. So, yeah, it's come a long way actually. And we're still trying to, I would say, find product market fit. We have customers, paying customers, but I don't think we are there yet. Mm. And uh, a lot of learnings we got from Omba Base is what is translating into Proxy Vault now. Okay. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So the way I see Proxy Vault is we've identified that humans are going to make mistakes. There's no two ways about it. Yeah. Right. Whether you like it or not. So we decided, okay, let us attack the surface areas where these mistakes happen which starts from API keys, database credentials, repo access, command line in production. Imagine running commands in production, how scary that must be. Uh, yeah. Running migrations the in production. And yeah. yeah. And a lot of them don't do it well. And you see some of them server goes down for hours. It's mm-hmm. scary, right? And so that's what uh, Proxy Vault is trying to address for that niche, particularly. Yeah. So that's how far we've come to date. Yeah. Very interesting that rather than a pivot, you're like, I see through your initial customer base, right? And then you see a need 
that is adjacent, but not exactly the same. And you're like, well, I think we can kind of buckle these yeah. together. Right. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. And it is all yeah, but, cloud all the time, or is there on-prem versions? Is there, uh, like, what do you do? I'm curious how the, I can see where this fits in, like, inf from an infrastructure perspective. So I guess I have, like, twofold. One is when that infrastructure isn't cloud-based, is there an opportunity there? And then conversely, that you you spoke a lot to, like, distributed teams and stuff. So my local also needs to be, like, what if my local... Does my local need to be connected to that infrastructure in some way then? Okay. So for on-prem, we do have an on-prem solution. In fact, uh, we're working with what could be our biggest customer and enterprise team, right? So we didn't start off as enterprise and we actually didn't want to go enterprise till next year, but we had a couple of enterprise team reach out to us out of nowhere and decided to maximize the opportunity, right? Uh, sure. So we had... We have a security blog that brings in about 10K traffic every month. So that's kind of where most of our customers come from. So they're actually the French national energy company, which is mm. was nice. Very and cool. So we started conversations with them and they requested for on-prem. And luckily for us, we already deployed a couple of on-prem to some of our customers. So that was almost no problem uh, going down that conversation. So it's it's not... a something we have not seen before, right? So you can easily deploy on-prem self-hosting for your needs if you want the, uh, you want to be at least guarantee high A at every point in time. And uh, yeah, and for the local developers, right? So we have something called offline availability. Even when you don't have internet, mm -hmm. you can still actively work based oh, on nice. the offline availability that the admin has set. So we have... Uh, seven days, two weeks, one month, six months, based on the offline availability that mm. the admin has set. So if it sets, you can work without internet for that duration. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice that you'd considered those use cases because those feel like yeah. some of the edges that would make things more challenging, right? Like SaaS is SaaS. People do cloud SaaS all the time, and that's sort of like table stakes really anymore, but things get harder. Right, outside yeah. of that. Yeah. 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 You what? have to do on-prem for like a lot of companies for them yeah. to even oh, be able yeah. to consider it. Yeah. yeah. And government what? association, I think, is like <laughs> probably a thing yeah. right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What helped us though is because we, I use Onboard Base every day. I don't write a single line of code without it. So it will make sense if I can't right. actually... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so eat your uh, own dog food. They say I don't. I don't know if uh, you're familiar with that term, but a yeah, uh, phrase. Yeah, yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> I think it's a a good thing to do. You should understand what your customers deal with, if possible, right? Like yep. obviously, there's tons of products that may not apply to developers, but this obviously very much does. And yeah, the developer tooling space and security in particular, I think, is an, a great niche to start to become a part of. There are two niches I think that are very unexplored. One is security, another is the energy space. The energy grid can literally make everyone null and void. If the energy grid goes down, we're right. all in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're literally all in trouble. Sure, a serious prepper. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I think Robbie's building a, he's got a whole like security bunker. Uh, behind no. his house. No, I don't. He's been filling it with whiskey. Yeah. I don't. I keep telling him. <laughs> I that do have a lot of whiskey. Survive on that. Yeah. Yeah. It has mm. calories, but it's not not maybe the uh, the best energy source. <laughs> yeah, your fight or flight's gonna get real slow. <laughs> well, at some point, I think I will build a bunker. <laughs> like yeah. I was, <laughs> the rise of AI. I don't think we're paying enough attention to things, even though we are all excited about innovation. Right. Uh, but I asked, a, I was at an event, speaking at an event, and I asked the audience that. So AI makes you productive, right? Mm -hmm. Don't you think it makes hackers even more productive? Absolutely. No, oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, everyone went mute <laughs> because mm -hmm. I didn't think they had thought about it. <laughs> Literally went mute because if it's making you, your life easier, it's going to make their life easier. It's just going to weigh 10 times more easier. But yeah. 
it feels we like are. we're ignoring that part of things and just excited about the innovation itself, which is good. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's even made social engineering more efficient, right? Like there was a thing in the recent U.S. election where there was an AI generated Biden voice calling people throughout America to tell them not yeah. to vote at a certain time. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that right there, there it is making someone's life easier, someone else's life uh -huh. harder, but someone's life easier. And I think I want to come back to a point that you made that I think is super important is that nobody really thinks about or i mean cares about maybe they care but like they're not inconvenienced by security until they until are, they are. Yeah. until yeah. exactly and i think that's a very important part point to bring up like i mean i'm obsessed with the podcast darknet diaries and so i always hear you know listen to those stories about like the worst things happening on the internet over the last few decades and it makes me wonder all the time but then the reality is, is that I am aware of how much I, ha the steps I haven't take to improve my, my s personal security. And yet here it is. It's even sitting in front of my face, but I'm not attacked, which I will be after this episode airs. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it, 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 it's, it's actually true for a lot of people and a lot of teams and teams even more, right? I found that some teams, teams do suck too to become compliant, right? But a lot of them right. do it for the wrong reasons. They do it because they want to sign a contract, business. but not yes. for business reasons. Yep. And then yep. they forget about it. But security is an ongoing process. You actually need to continuously improve your security. Uh, yep. I, I speak to a lot of fintech companies and they think because they've gotten their sub two, they are safe. Oh my goodness. Yeah, they were they were safe in that moment. <laughs> yeah. But then, like, uh, have you changed your that. default passwords? Because you're probably not as safe as you think. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> right. Yeah. Like, and when you check some of your systems, they do use very random passwords. They use passwords for passwords. They use yeah. sometimes they wouldn't have passwords because they think everything is on their intranet and should be safe. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, it's, now, once uh, well, someone gets access again. If, if you're not familiar with Darknet Diaries, you should just listen to yeah. a few of those. Mm. It's it's crazy, the stuff that people get access yeah. to once they get past just one or two very menial secur security measures. So Yeah. 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 Yeah, so that that's one of the reasons why I'll on Bus Base, at least to protect the developer layer to begin with. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, and uh, we keep shipping out security tools after security tools just to you know what we are not even asking to pay for it just be secure at this point <laughs> that's yeah. uh, kind of <laughs> how some of our security tools have been targeted so yeah is anything open source uh, in... yeah we have a couple of them actually we have one for terraform states okay. you know a lot of we use terraform states but they put those terraform states in their code base like literally just there yeah, so <laughs> what we did was we helped them encrypt it in transient and at rest. That's what that does. And uh, you can just continue to use it. So it's free and open source. And nice. then we did another one. So you don't mistakenly leak sensitive information through console logs to production. You can mm -hmm. imagine how many console logs I remove from code bases every day. And some of oh, them yeah. have keys leaked into it. <laughs> and those things make it to production. So yeah, there's but... something called... How how else am I going to debug when I'm working on a feature unless I just console <laughs> log a bunch of stuff out? And yeah. sometimes it's sensitive information. I I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah. and uh, the developer tools yeah, get better, and I still do the same shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true for a lot of us, and that's what so console log address and it's open source. It's actually one of our most stud repo. Nice. Yeah, so we try as much as possible to do open source and. Most of the things we open source are internal tools we built to use ourselves and just push it out. Very cool. Very cool. Robbie looked like he was about to sorry. say something, so I paused. He, no, he sorry, always tells I was... me I talk a lot, you know, and so I'm just trying to be... I was sending I a link try to, to be Dave. a good partner sorry. to my co-host. Co <laughs> <laughs> and he gets distracted when I talk. He's like, oh, that guy's talking again. Whatever else. Yeah, okay, so that all like kind of tracks and makes makes sense to me. Uh, 
like sounds like very cool stuff. So obviously best of luck to you around that. But we are also like curious for no personal benefit whatsoever about starting your own company, starting your own software company. Like, what does that look like? What is that journey? How has that been for you? Was on onboard base your first? It's the first official one, right? Others yeah. have mostly been uh, products, really. Just yeah, yeah. Here and there, India, couple of but on board base is the first uh, official one, right? Um, it's been tough, right? And um, I'm a solo founder. And I can tell you, it's tough to be a solo founder, but <laughs> if you don't have a co-founder, don't bother yourself about it, right? If you have one, great. If you don't, it's not the end of the world. The way I see co-founder relationships, I've seen a lot of them and most of them have ended in heartbreak, but right. few have succeeded, right? And my when someone tells me, hey... Co-founding is like a marriage. I'm like, do you know the average rate of divorces in the U.S.? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, so there you go. Bear that in mind. Be as selective yeah. with it's your business It's probably similar to business partners, yeah. yeah. Which, Chuck, yeah. we need to talk, I think. Yeah, for sure. I would <laughs> say I can tell you it. <laughs> You know, don't just jump into business with anyone <laughs> with syntax t-shirts. I mean, I would... Yeah. Absolutely, really vet them. So uh, anyway, yeah, you get a couple yeah. of mics, and you think you can have a good time, and then they want to talk about responsibility, blah, blah, yeah. blah, and, you know, and drink whiskey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you feel sorry for me. I understand exactly. This is <laughs> this is a tough gig, man. Mm. Yeah, so it has been tough with Umber Base, especially also fundraising. We've not raised from VC, okay, mostly yeah. from angels and uh, texters last year so we've not raised any round from vc but our angels are very strategic we have some of the big ones so i have Tio, i have zig oh nice I have doogie and a couple more yeah so yeah so yeah so yeah. It, it's a different landscape these days right like a bubble yeah. burst in mm -hmm. a way uh, yeah. across right. and and now sort of the you know, an idea and growth isn't quite enough to do it, right? Like my understanding, and I, I don't have this firsthand as of yet, but, you know, you're looking at, you really need to prove the business model and you need to prove it in like basically ARR kind of thing. Like, you know, bring the users, bring the money. And then, yeah. yeah. And yeah, it's it's true. And it's really tough to raise or. I don't know. It's been tough for me to raise, at least. I think some people find it way, way easier to raise, maybe because they can sell better or something. To yeah, possible. But, <laughs> yeah, that is uh, part of the the equation for sure. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm a terrible yeah. salesman, and because we we were on a consultancy, and yeah, I have a, a very hard time like selling a client. Like I can talk to them about what we're gonna do, but there's something about being like a salesman minded person yeah. that can like push them over the edge to, yeah, to the say push, yes and i don't sure yeah i don't really know i don't have that that nuance in i my can approach. create relationships <laughs> i can get people to like me i can like have a good time having a conversation mm -hmm, with them mm -hmm. having a coffee or yeah. whatever you are and then when it gets to like okay are we gonna do this and they're like i don't know you know i'm not like well let's find out let me come with you let me talk to your <laughs> boss like no i don't do any of those yeah. things and that yeah. i think can be yeah. challenging yeah 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 it's, you know, yeah and uh, I think that's how you raise VC these days. Sell them a dream that a lot of times it must never happens. Right. Uh, right. I mean, it's all a lottery ticket, right? They're hedging their bets <laughs> across the board. And they've just yeah. said that, like, the the ability to get on their bingo card is a little tougher, right? They want the, mm -hmm. the standards for that, for better or worse, isn't always about, like, the validity of the idea, but it's maybe about the person behind the idea and how much they've been able to sell it up to that point. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 At some point, I just said, you know what? I'm not going to raise, I'm not going to speak to VCs anymore because the conversations were not productive. And I felt that if I had to be on a call to explain to you why security is important, then that conversation is not, is not productive. That's true. <laughs> I mean, yeah. so 
and uh, uh, it was more straightforward speaking to angels who use the product and uh, know the problem itself. So that yep. was way more straightforward. And we've gotten by by lots. Like Evo has been helping a lot with the design of one of our investors, and so it, it's been fun. Though we, at some point we would consider raising uh, a small round. I don't believe in raising money I don't need. Right. And yeah, sure, to absolutely. an extent, that is not good for VC. Yeah. Uh, yeah I've yeah, heard yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I would not be forced to raise money I do not need for any reason at all. No, I think that's yeah. great. So, <laughs> well, you could use more money to hire a team that will then hack everyone's secret keys and be like, just email <laughs> and be like, I found this key. Maybe you need my product. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, That's true. You need yeah. a red team. That's the yeah. problem. You need a red yeah. team. Hire a yeah. red team, go expose vulnerabilities and be like, and the solution is here. Yeah. That might be legal too. <laughs> That's marketing. <laughs> yeah, it's marketing, but it might be legal as well. Right? Yeah. Especially the legality. For... It's a gray area. Yeah. Well, it depends on what country you hire those developers in, right? So it okay. depends. As many Fair answers, enough. it depends. Yeah. Everything's yeah. legal in Russia, I've heard. So right, yeah, that was my obvious yeah. thing too. But I didn't yeah. want to like. I don't know. Yeah. Do you People ruffle anyone's so... feathers by bringing up Russia as potential hacker? Mm. I don't know. No, I don't. I don't know. I, I don't know. Like I'm probably on the verge of getting canceled any moment. So, you know, just as a Gen <laughs> Xer in, in life, I'm I'm walking a tightrope. So yeah. it's coming. You know, it doesn't matter well, if I say I like, you know, Taylor Swift or something. Somebody is mad at me. Well, that means you have a voice. So that's good. At least other people yeah. who get canceled have a voice. <laughs> so, so I guess there's, there's that. that. Yeah, yeah, that's a yeah. good counterpoint. I appreciate like the positivity associated with that. Yeah. So there's a well, question. We, yeah, you what? I was gonna say, well, we can can spin that into something you actually do like. I don't know if you like Taylor Swift or not, but uh, you guys are both Manchester United fans. Oh, yeah. really? yeah. oh my yeah. goodness! So let's not talk about Manchester United. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, we kind of have to just because I don't have an opportunity that often. Yeah. Even when we speak to folks in the UK, half the yeah. time, more than half, they're the like, time, they're "I've like, heard of football." They're like, "I don't, <laughs> really like, I don't like, yeah. I, I don't really like football." And I'm like, <laughs> "You're there. Uh, like, how do you live there and not like just... football?" I know. <laughs> like, that's like saying uh, you don't like fish and chips or something. You know, what? like. I, I, oh I don't fancy yeah. a bubble and squeak, you know, like what? <laughs> what do you mean you don't fancy <laughs> bubble and squeak? Bubble That's and squeak what's is there delicious. and it's delicious. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> anyway, yes, it's a hard time for us. That oh. said, we're in a massive transition and, you know, you, you just have to be you, you got to write this one off. This is like a practice season. First of all, 50 percent <laughs> of the first team squad is injured. Some of them for like the majority of the season, our like number one defender who has like mm -hmm. Heart of a Lion, nice, yeah. he's like five six, has Heart of a Lion, just kills it, but has also killed his. Uh, I guess it's like a thigh injury or whatever. Yeah, it is a uh, thigh reoccurring time. Yeah, yeah. So like that's not great. Plus like new signings that just never really get going. Mason Mount seems like a waste of time, but here we are. Yeah. People said that Chelsea fans told us, and it's true. Mm. See, probably got me started and he he regrets it immediately anyway. uh man so when i look at united no i just i'm sad <laughs> though i still watch the game every saturday but I'm absolutely just sad after yeah that i watch match. every single one uh, I, I i almost don't know where things are wrong right because i can say it's the quality of the squad because we do have quality yeah there's no depth right i mean we have everybody's hurt and you're playing kids that some have yeah. some like you know, amazing potential, but it's just not ready. And yeah, yeah. I, oh, so this past weekend it was Ma it was the derby. It was yeah, Manchester United versus oh, man. man City. First forty five looked like we had a we had a decent plan, right? We just couldn't hold it for that long. I mean, so Manchester City won what they call the treble, so that means like they're European champions, they are league champions, and then they're the League Cup champions. So you get the treble mm. out of that. No, no, and the FA Cup. Yeah, league that's the league cup. No, FA Cup is different from okay. League Cup is the Carabao Cup. Mm. It's different. 
See, cause so we because won the, the Carabao Cup last season. Right. Right. But the FA Cup is like every level of the FA. So, oh, right, right. Uh, I know what you're saying. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean like the, the whole like uh, F football yeah. association. Duh, Chuck. Yeah. Sorry. You should yeah, know well, better. You know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I, I appreciate the correction. So I know what I meant, not what I said. Mm -hmm. So I was just explaining to Robbie as a noob and our one listener. Our listener probably doesn't have any idea what we're talking about. <laughs> anyway, so it's like the top, you know, one of the top squads in the league and, you know, you're expected to get blown away and then you get a false sense of hope through the halftime and then they equalize and then they go up and you're just kind of like, yeah, but oh, looks like we might, we might, maybe we're going to get a tie here and that would be yeah. amazing in spite of, right? Third goal goes in. I was just like, all right, well, uh, I just... Yeah, I'm that, done. It's it's the de the definition of is the hopes that kill. Literally, the hope that kills. Like yeah. that's kind of how I felt yeah. watching that game. But, man, um, I, I was drinking a bottle of whiskey, so it just literally got me the rest of the day. Uh, you know what? Nice, mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, I'll just say, I was <laughs> not in a good mood for a while, and uh, yeah, you know, my family and wife feel those effects. Not that I say or do anything, but that's the point. Yeah, I'm yeah. Quiet. <laughs> And I'm brooding, and they just know, yeah. like, okay, dad's yeah. not in a good and, place. And, we'll give him some time. And, anytime my wife sees me like that, she's like, so do you guys lost again, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> so I, I, won't, I, I won't drag the subject on, even though I could probably have a separate podcast just with you talking okay. about this, because I have very strong appeal, <laughs> opinions. I, I'm going to ask this question. Eric Ten Hag, in or out? <laughs> That's a tricky one. So I would say, right, I would say give him another season, right? And that's me being modest, right? I would say give him another season, let's see. But he, he has just a number of games to prove himself now. And if he doesn't do that, he doesn't get another season, right? But I can't say everything is down to the players, right? It's It looks like it's the patterns themselves that are wrong. Right, but the players are not either built for those patterns or are finding it hard to adjust to it. And you know how Jose Moreno has one pattern, one way to win, right? Yep. Without actually changing. I think this is, has come to where Ten Hag is, is trying to do something and he's not being flexible or fluid with it. That's yeah. the way I would say. But yeah. Agree with that. I think it's like an unfair assessment in general over the season because he basically hasn't been able to select his first mm -hmm. 11. Like, I think there's some stat where it's like 10% or something at the time. Yeah. Like his planned first 11 has just basically never happened. Yeah, and tactics happened. will only take you so far. And if you don't have squad depth, also a problem. So you really can't say like his control is tactics, training, preparation, and just the tactics just don't apply in this situation. Yeah. So unless it just is also absolute garbage, for the next X number of games, I say another season two. Let him see out the contract in a better infrastructure, hopefully better injury luck, and then we'll see what happens. Yeah. What do you want to talk about, Robbie? So, you know, I am just the biggest soccer fan. I know so much about it. I had to just keep mm -hmm. myself. <laughs> exactly. I can't no. wait to take you to what is probably your first match. I don't know. We'll see. In yeah. Miami, maybe yeah. the first match. Okay. Oh. Are we going to that? Uh, I am. I don't know if you are, but so we're going to be it's in Miami Saturday for night. yeah Saturday. Night. So we're mm -hmm. going to be in Miami for React Miami, and hopefully ah. having a a connection there, chilling to go with to Messi. a match, chilling with Leo. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, yeah, I've been to Rosario. I mean, I know what the old boys yeah. was up with that. So my Spanish isn't that yeah. good though. So I don't know if we could have yeah. a conversation. We could have. We could share a mate. <laughs> hmm. You could yeah. probably understand him, just you couldn't speak back well enough. <laughs> yeah, probably that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway. He speaks no English. Mm, mm, yeah. Not that much. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let's let's pivot to another question here. If you weren't in tech, what other career would you choose? Uh, I'll be a content creator. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah, I'm telling you. So, um TikTok, tons of dancing, like that. TikTok, TikTok, yeah. man. I know tons of content creators making lots of money from just 
Seriously, yeah. like man, I I won't let a mind the wrong career choice that I made the wrong <laughs> career choice or something because it's insane the, the amount of money <laughs> they're making just but yeah, I don't know. But that that would be my career choice if I wasn't in tech. Or maybe something I uh, I would do is play basketball. I used to play basketball a lot when I was growing up. Um so but uh I had a lot of injuries, so maybe I would have probably been on the bench like most of Ten Hag's team. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you collect that paycheck like most of Ten yeah. Hag's team. Oh yeah. That's not yeah. a bad deal either. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I uh, yeah. I heard of a new career today that I'm interested in. Apparently, if you sell private jets, each one you sell, you get like a three hundred thousand dollar commission. So I'm like, okay, hmm, you just have to sell one jet a year, and, like, and you can live a decent life. Can yeah. I do it? Yeah, <laughs> you just said one you're not a good a salesman. I know, so maybe I'm not the best fit. But I mean, like for people looking for a gig that are decent at sales, maybe check that out. That sounds like a, a lucrative yeah. career. Yeah. Sell private yeah. jets, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the rich yeah. stay rich and get richer. Yep. Huh. Huh. Interesting. That is true. Yeah, you got Dante thinking like. Hmm. <laughs> I, it's funny. So my context to the name Dante, aside from like Dante's Inferno which is probably like the frequent thing you get referenced. But mm -hmm. have you ever seen the movie Clerks by Kevin Smith? And there's like been three of them or something, but Clerks. I didn't think I didn't it was a nineties indie film. And then he got famous and made a few more amongst many other things, but there was more than two. Yeah. There's a third one. I haven't oh. seen the third one. Ooh. So, but uh, you know, cause Kevin Smith isn't as famous as he was once mm -hmm. with whatever, but I've, I've enjoyed many of his films. Yeah. So in Clerks, the original one, the main character is Dante, who runs the like convenience store. And then his friend Randall runs the video store next next door. So this again, I am a Gen Xer. So we still had VHS tapes. It's a 90s movie. But uh, yeah, that character, Dante. Anyway, I don't know. Oh, Fun fact, correlation there for me. Yeah, that's nice. That's a new one for me, too. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to bring it up. I was like, there's an obvious one, and then there's the one I'm going to say. So, uh -huh. you know, there's that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Interesting. All right. We are about at time here. Where can people connect with you and find more? Find out more about Onboard Base and, you know, what, whatever you want to plug here at the end? Uh, so yeah, we are taking beta invites for Proxy Vault at the moment. Proxy Vault is a global permissioning system for your infrastructure and digital assets. So check it out. I request LESS and who will add you to the team. Nice. So you're sending out at least two additional beta invites, right? <laughs> yeah, at least two. <laughs> All right, fair enough. And I, yeah. I will definitely check out your open source. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone, for listening. If you liked it, please subscribe. Leave us some ratings and reviews. We appreciate it. And we will catch you next time. Yeah. Bye.